Paris is a famous city which owns many historical sports and interesting places, such as the Eiffel Tower, the Temple Arch, attracting tourists all over the world. The Seine River, dotted by parks, green spaces on both sides, hosts of many beautiful menu and natural sceneries. A liquid gold with a charming color, mysterious emotion, and soft mellow smile follows in the vein of Paris, the world's most romantic capital. Today we are going to visit the Wine Museum of Paris near the Eiffel Tower on the right bank of the Seine River. The museum, in the 16th arrondissement in Paris, was opened in 1984. Used to be a medieval wine cellar, the small museum tells us the history of French wine industry. With these reminiscent artifacts, antique tools, wine bottles, corkscrews, glasses, and vitamins. Welcome to the Wine Museum in Paris. Our Wine Museum is situated in the center of Paris, close to the Eiffel Tower. And our museum exists from 30 years in the center of Paris. Street of Water, the Wine Museum, in the Street of Water. So, uh, the, our museum and expositions are situated in the ancient galleries, which served as the extraction of uh, stones to construct the buildings in Paris. Today, a main tat, Kapisov, who has worked in the museum for years, will take us to visit a variety of instruments for planting, transporting, pressing and brewing of wine growing. Here you see uh, the instruments to walk the earth, to walk in the vineyards. Uh, the interesting fact is that the viticulture, also walking in the vineyard, was not changed over the last 5,000 years. Uh, till the invention of mechan mechanization. You have, in every part of the world, uh, in Europe or in Asia, you have the same instruments and same procedures to walk in the vineyards. During the growing period of grapes, spades and scissors are very useful. Farmers use them to remove buds, cleaning, pruning, and cutting unnecessary branches from the vines in different seasons. When grapes are picked, it's time to transport them to factories for brewing. So here you see a recipient in wood, which served to put the grapes and to transport them in the vineyards to press. Here you have um, an old uh, pressoir. They put it, the grapes, the ripe mature grapes, and they turned uh, just for the first uh, pressing. You know, these first pressings were done every time by the feet of people, like this. This operation was done a whole thousand years by, by feet like this. It takes years of storage for the birth of a bottle of high-quality wine. The best container for storing the wine is the oak barrel, which helps greatly in the taste of wine. We see how the oak barrels are uh, produced. I've told that the oak uh, barrels were invented by the Gauls, ancestors of uh, French. It's very important to produce good wine, uh, to ripen, to mature the wine in the oak barrel. So when the wine is put in the barrel, they are exchanged between atmosphere, uh, wood and the wine. So the wine develops its bucket, which is called bucket, interesting and complex aromas in the oak barrel. And you know, all the famous wine producers in France uh, uh, produce the oak barrels and the procedure is made everything by hand. And so the oak barrel gives a lot of interesting aromas to the wine. The fruity aromas of the wine are interchanging with the woody aromas, vanilla, uh, toasted bread and uh, cocoa, tobacco, and so have uh, really complex, interesting aromas uh, in the wine. According to archaeologists, wine was originally stored in large potteries known as amphora. When the Romans developed glass blowing, glass was soon found to be a good medium for storing wine. So here you have uh, an ancient uh, amphora in terracotta. It's from Roman uh, epoch, which served to stock and transport the wine. 
It uh, dates uh, 2,000 years uh, ago. The wine is put in the bottles around 150, 200 years uh, ago. The wines normally were stocked and transported in oak barrels and in barrels of uh, different wood. Um, to produce the bottle is a highly complex and difficult process. So, um, and uh, with the industrialization, um, they started to produce the bottle, a uh, freely uh, strong glass to transport and to stock the wine. The invention of the bottle enables to age the wine for a long period in the bottle because the glass is neutral in taste, so it gives no aromas to the wine. So after uh, the wine has aged in the oak barrels, about two or more, uh, more years, they put, uh, the wine is put in the bottle. And in the bottle they can develop more interesting and complex aromas without taking more woody aromas from oak barrels. So the glass is neutral and enables the wine to age and uh, to develop interesting aromas in the bottle. There are many classification methods of wines. According to the percentage of carbon dioxide, the wine can be divided into steel wine and sparkling wine. Red wines and white are steel wine, while champagne is kind of sparkling wine. So let's have a look of how to make a champagne. Champagne is a very famous sparkling wine uh, in all over the world. It's wine of uh, party, wine to celebrate the anniversary, wine uh, really to, um, to celebrate uh, an event. So it's a very famous sparkling wine. You know how to make uh, uh, this sparkling wine. Champagne, you know, is a white wine. But uh, the interesting point, this white wine is made from red wine grapes. The red wine grapes pressed and the skins are immediately separated. So the juice is white. So uh, the juice ferments, the yeast eat the sugar, which is uh, in, uh, in the must, and so the wine is made. The normal white wine is made. Then they put this white wine in the bottle and they add the sugar and the yeast and the bottle is closed. So the yeast starts to eat sugar and uh, they produce also uh, carbon dioxide gas, which cannot escape from the bottle because the bottle is closed. After the dead yeasts are in the bottle, so it's not nice and uh, they must take out the dead yeasts from the bottle. So the bottle is put like in the tables like this, yes, in this position, and every day uh, one worker turns uh, the bottle one fourth or one eighth of its turn. Every day. And after two masses, the bottle is in horizontal position and all the dead yeasts are concentrated here um, in the neck of the bottles. So uh, they proceed to open the bottle to expulse uh, these uh, dead yeasts and they add a little bit wine and sugar and uh, they close uh, the bottle with a cork and so the wine, uh, this bottle of champagne rests at least uh, 15 months for the ripening in the cave. Cognac is a typical steel wine named after the town of Cognac in France. It is one of the most famous brandies, produced in departments of Charente and Charente Marine Time in France. The manufacturing process of cognac is over 400 years old. We have here the real uh, alambic to distill the cognac. You know, uh, cognac is distilled two times. The first distillation gives a liquid which uh, has 40 degrees. The second distillation gives liquid which has uh, 80 degrees. So uh, then uh, the liquid is put into the oak barrels. region of cognac, in every small cave, you have a really small part of the cave which is called paradise, where stocked the cognac from 17th and 18th century. And you know, um, from the oak barrels the alcohol evaporizes and it calls the uh, part of the angels. And in the whole region of Cognac, every year, uh, 20 million of bottle, bottles evaporize. Wandering in the winding passages, visitors could learn a lot about the history, the viticulture and the winemaking process of French wines. Besides the ancient tools, the most impressive exhibitions are the vivid waxwork figures, which molded all those famous persons who had made significant contributions to the development of wine industry. You know uh, uh, Louis Pasteur? Pasteurization, pasteurized milk, pasteurized juice. So he was a scientist who studied um, 
uh, bacteria in the wine. So he discovered uh, he, he discovered that they were the bacteria, the yeast, which uh, convert the sugar into alcohol. Pasteur discovered the reason why wine would go sour. He found out two different yeasts in a good and a sour alcohol, and demonstrated that mild heating applied after fermentation could kill microorganisms and prevent souring. This general heating has come to be known as pasteurization. For the 1855 World Fair, Napoleon III requested a classification system for the Bordeaux wines, which were to be on display. The World Fair was a chance for France to display its very best for the world to see. The Bordeaux Wine Brokers Union went to work on the project and came up with what we now refer to as the classification of 1855. This uh, scenery evokes uh, the classification of uh, Bordeaux grosses in uh, 1855. This was the first um, so-called official classification ever ever made in France between uh, the different wines. So, if you know the most most famous chateaus like Chateau Mouton Rochelle, Chateau Margaux, there's the first grosses um, which were classified by this uh, classification. This was made for the Universal Exposition in uh, in Paris to just to present uh, the French wines uh, to international public. You know that Bordeaux region is the second largest vineyard uh, in the world and produces one billion bottles per year. And you have fifty fifty seven different uh, uh, appellations, so called uh, registered place of geo geographical origin, appellation d'origine contrôlée, which produce really different styles of wine. Here is an échanson. It's a very old profession in France. Today, it's a sommelier which tastes the wine in restaurant just to to know if the wine is good or not. And the échanson in Middle Ages um, tasted the wine just to detect the poison in the wine. And after he served uh, the wine to king and uh, and the queen. Uh, and so um, this profession was called échanson. Today is it's sommelier, and there's a costume, traditional costume of uh, a nation. Today, sommelier means a professional who is capable of giving valuable advice to customers in the restaurant. He must make himself instantly recognizable in the dining room, which is the reason for careful choice of clothes: black trousers, shoes and socks, white shirt, black waistcoat and a bow tie. Green swallowtail jacket or red one. The Paris Wine Museum assumes itself the mission to show rich and varied cultural heritage on grape cultivation, wine brewing, and storage. Rich collections here provide visitors lots of knowledge on wine culture and represent a lively vision of wine growing from past to future. A fantastic yet cozy wine bar is in the cellar beside the exhibition area. Visitors could come here and have a glass of wonderful wine. Like a well-known saying, "Good wine gladdens a person's heart." There's no better ending than a cup of wine for a trip through the wine history.